Now, before undertaking any kind of air sealing or insulating work, Joe, what are some of the things that people should consider? Let's go back to the energy evaluation of the house. The energy evaluation of the house should have told the homeowner what they've got now for insulation levels, both in the attic and the walls, and also should have identified major air leakage paths and locations that need to be dealt with. So let's first uh, talk about the attics. Uh, most people are aware that attic insulation could be lower than it needs to be. Uh, they're always asking us how much we should top it up to. We really start at an R40, which could be 12 to 14 or 15 inches of either bat or blown in insulation. If, there room, if there's room for that, then we'll look at some attics. That's the kind of target that we're looking for. But it's very important before you insulate an attic to seal any air leakage paths from the house up into the attic. These air leakage paths are going to bring warm, moist air into that space and because that space is cool, that moisture can condense in the area and start to do some damage to the building. The walls are similar. If they're empty, we've got some options for blowing insulation into the walls. Occasionally people will tear the whole inside surface out and add insulation that way in a major renovation. Usually that's when they're going to rewire and do some real serious work. If the walls are insulated, then we start looking at either adding insulation to the inside or the outside. Usually that is in conjunction with other renovation work that's going on, so we'll look at the options. What are some of the key areas in an attic that people need to really consider when thinking about air leakage? Ideally, an attic or ceiling of a house should be airtight. There should be no cracks or gaps or holes where warm, moist air can leak from the house up into the attic. Right? So if you th start thinking with that in mind, then the question comes, okay, where are the holes? Obvious holes are things like the access to the attic, whether it's a pull-down stairway or a hatch. Typically those aren't weather stripped, so they allow air leakage into the attic. And then any time where any, there's been any penetration of the ceiling, there's often gaps around plumbing vent pipes and uh, chimneys or flues that originate inside the house and come up into the attic. So identifying those and sealing around them. Light fixtures, another area, okay? and wiring often is drilled up through the framing into the attic. So those are some very typical ones. Now, a thorough investigation might even discover some things that are very unusual or particular to that house. So those are some good tips about attics, Joe. What about walls? Well, you can also have air leakage through the exterior walls of a house. And the typical places that people might be familiar with are around electrical plugs and poorly installed doors and windows. Those are quite common. Uh, Typically, it's the older windows and doors that haven't been installed properly, or in the oldest houses, we've got wood windows with no weather stripping at all, so there's air leaking around the actual window sash. And the solutions to them are, are not too difficult. Um, and again, it all goes back to sealing and caulking for windows and doors. Uh, new in windows can be installed properly. That will help solve that problem or eliminate that problem. For electrical, you got to remember that the air leakage that's coming from an electrical plug isn't actually originating there. It's, the air is coming through other cracks and gaps in the building and then finding its way inside through the electrical plug or switch. So you've often seen people uh, will purchase these little foam uh, gaskets that they can put behind the uh, particular uh, switch cover. Those help a little bit but the air is still moving in the wall and they won't dramatically reduce the air leakage in the house, but they'll stop the leakage in that location. It's a bit of an improvement, it is a cheap fix, but it's not gonna dramatically reduce your air leakage overall in the building. And what about older homes that didn't have a vapor barrier installed when they were constructed? What can people do to compensate for that? That's a question that we get all the time in Efficiency New Brunswick, both from contractors and from homeowners. People are quite concerned about this and are looking for advice. Uh, what you have to remember is that what a vapor barrier's job is, is to keep warm, moist vapor, air vapor, in the house from getting out into the wall or into the attic where it's cold, and it will condense and then wet the wood and the insulation and, and cause some damage. Most of that moisture that's going to make it from the inside out into the building structure is actually going to travel uh, through air leakage paths. So the primary defense against this is sealing up the building. The vapor transmission through the solid surfaces, it could be painted plaster, it could be drywall, it could be solid wood, is very, very, very slow. So we can solve the problem, we can protect the building by actually making it airtight. 
Uh, people have gone to great extent in lengths I've seen sometimes up in attics fitting vapor barrier between all the joists and caulking and ceiling. And then if they really want some extra measure of protection, when they paint the wall or ceiling, use a paint that has a vapor barrier or a vapor retardant rating. And these are commonly available. What kind of R-value insulation should people be trying to achieve in their walls? That really depends on where you're starting from. Walls are a lot more complicated in some ways than attics because attics is often a lot of space up there so you can actually get higher levels in them. In the wall you're constrained. So really in one way of looking at it is there's sort of two families of walls. There's still some houses out there where the walls are uninsulated. They're completely empty. So we want to start by blowing insulation into those walls. Cellulose and, and fiberglass are the most common products to be used and that's where we'll start from. So how much R value you can get in that wall depends on the framing. Is it four inches? Is it six inches? Is it an older house with even thicker walls? That's going to tell you what you can fit in there. Now, in addition to that, you may put extra insulation on the outside of the building underneath new siding, and that can be done on newer houses where the wall is already insulated. The important thing to keep in mind in all of this, and the energy advisor may have some comments, maybe someone's had a home energy evaluation or inspection done, uh, is that there may be existing problems. If there's moisture damage to the building already, if there's air quality or mold uh, conditions in the building, those kind of things need to be dealt with before the insulating and air sealing happens. Right? We don't want to cover up existing problems.